Fix up the screens, they're statically beamed. Granny's records keep a spinning when the sun goes down. Welcome back to the second part of the HMV 501 Gram restoration, um, tabletop radio gram. I've got on the bench beside me. Um, you can see the cause and things it's poking out the, the in the corner of the picture here. I've filled it up full of, of, of valves, all tested, so we know the valves are good. Um, there's a bit of a mixed match of valves in there, but they're all tested, working good. So what I've got to do now is I'll just take the camera off the stand and we'll have a quick look as we bring the power up for the first time and just keep our fingers crossed that all that wiring and, and, and hard work has uh, actually paid off. Time to actually power up the set for the, uh, for the first time. We know we've got good valves in because they've been tested. Um, so we know we've got a bit, half a chance with those. Obviously, we've done quite a lot of wiring. Um, so there is a chance that something's not in the wrong place. Uh, but fingers crossed, um, we'll be able to get something out of this fairly quickly. I've got an area connected temporary speaker or the bench speaker. The meter you can see up here in the top right is uh, going to be showing the HT. So we're going to monitor that as it comes up. I'm through the lamp limiter. So the, the, the lamp, uh, the, the current flow will be reduced to start with. Um, all right, let's yap. Let's just get some power on it and see what it does. Um, right, that's off there. So that's now on. Dial bulbs come, which is a good sign. You'll notice that the HT jumps up really quick. Look, we're 300. I'm only on the dim bulb on one setting as well. So we've got 330 volts. Because these are directly heated rectifier, it starts emitting its electrons very quickly. So we start to see the HT come up really, really quick, uh, but it'll start to drop down as the rest of the valves warm up. So there we are, at 170 volts, we're on 180 volts on the AC going in. So let's just see um, 20 watts. The whole bulb is staying the same. We're not drawing excessive current. I can see the bulbs at the top um, quite happy. So let me just give that another bulb. And they're now taking us to 200 volts. Um, volume is that's a bit noisy on there. Oh, that's off. Oh, that's a good sign. It doesn't have a volume control in the conventional sense of the word, it actually sort of increases the gain of the, of the, of the valve. I would imagine how it works on the front. Hence, you get to a point where it starts to, you know, oscillate. So that's doing. That is. Hey. Brilliant. Oh, it's dead chuff. That's great. We're well, still on low volts. So let me just bring that up. So we've got all bolts in now. So we're on forty watts. 36 to 30 volts, so that's around about where we need to be. I'll double check on the, the HT. Because if you want to respect the rule of law, you got to start from the original lawgiver, which was Moses. Brilliant. Well, that's the actual radio parts used to work. I could put it on a long way, but we're not going to get very much. I've only got a very short aerial connected uh, at the moment, so we're not going to get a long way. And as I mentioned in previous videos, it's uh, it's soon going to be gone anyway. There's not going to be much on there to listen to. Well, there won't be anything from the UK to listen to. Let me just double check because obviously we've got to use the gram input on this. Hold on, that's off. That must be the gram. If I can see it, I can hear it humming a bit. Um, gram is that one. Let's bring the volume up on there. Brilliant. Okay, I'm just with that. That's pretty much all we want to do with testing it. The, the HT seems to be there, thereabouts. It's a little bit on low volts, 230, 240. Yeah, but not a million miles away from what it says on there. Perfect. So what I'm going to do now, I need to just to look at this. If you notice, I'm tuning through. This is made of celluloid, uh, and it shrinks over the time, and it's, it's started to come off the, the actual rim. So what I need to do is just undo these screws here and, and help it back onto there. Um, otherwise, what's going to happen is going to scratch and, and damage itself on the actual little window that shows for the front of the radio. OK, I'll get on with that. And then we're going to concentrate on getting the actual the gram, the, the motor, the gramophone part done. Uh, and then we're sort of there and halfway back again. Then we'll just get the actual tone arm rebuilt 
um, and then we can put it all back in its box and, and get it back to the customer. Got the, um, the, the celluloid frequency guide, if you like, the dial off the front, uh, and you can see there's the numbers on there for the medium long wave dial. Uh, it's filthy inside, so we'll give it all a bit of a clean. Um, but you can see that sort of it's distorted. It's it's all a bit wobbly. And what I what I've done in the past with reasonable success is I sure just got a, a I'm going to stick it inside here, and I'm going to hit it with a very very sort of lukewarm iron, and it just allows it to be flattened out while I clean it, um, and it gets rid of some of that deformation that you can see on there. Um, and then we get it back on. So put that under there. Very carefully. I it, mean, it, it's it's reasonably flexible, but I want to just put that down like that, and then just get the iron lightly. I don't want it too much heat. I'd say never go directly onto the celluloid because it won't be very happy. It's just starting to warm it up slowly. It's barely warm yet, so keep going a bit more. It's for a fairly thick towel, so and I'm just trying to be a bit careful. So I'll carry on doing this until it's um, flat, so I can give it a clean, um, and then we'll be able to get it back on the dial. So there we go. It's all nice and clean um, and back on. It's not 100% perfect, but it's no longer catching. It was really rubbing on here, so um, that's all hunky dory. Right on with the with uh, the with the gram. Got the motor on the bench um, from the HMV gram, and um, we can see it's a, a, a disc induction type. You can see the spinner. I mean, the actual motor itself is lovely and free. I mean, I will oil it up. Um, obviously, there's the governor that controls the speed. Uh, as you move this lever, this is what sets the speed. And obviously, as they spin, they just pull this disc. If I spin it, you see it move. Obviously, when that's in a, in a certain position, it prevents it from running any faster. Um, and I say that's pretty much a, you know, a hang up of, of how they were doing their gramophone motors when they were clockwork. Look on this side. Um, here are the field coils, they're all fine, um, they're measured up, but and the wiring is good as well. We're lucky that this has actually got cotton covered, um, and it's all survived really well. This stuff is the, the, that's got mains and everything going off up to the back of the set, um, that will get replaced, because that's gone. Um, but I'm going to just double check the, the, this wiring, but these motors have these two, um, two, micro, two times two microfarad capacitors. There's two mic here, two mic here. Uh, you can see that it's the same sort of pitch filled variant that we had before so what I'm going to do is just pop that take those off uh, get them in the oven take the pitch out of those and get two new two microfarad capacitors obviously uh, non-polarized because they're running on the AC back in there uh, clean the motor up put some new wiring on and then we can get it back in the set I'm not going to then show you again me replacing more capacitors inside the set uh, so when you come back all the wiring will be tidied up and these capacitors will be replaced Alrighty, so the motor is rewired. Um, I say rewired, uh, the, the, you know, cleaned up, tidied up. Um, all the, the, these wires have been replaced. You can see with some sort of period-looking wires, uh, new mains lead that go in here in the sort of period-looking cotton-covered flex. The uh, two microfarad capacitors, one here and one here, they've been uh, pitch taken out, old capacitors taken out, new ones fitted, and then refilled with pitch so they look uh, as close to the original as possible. So just going to get this back into, well, after a quick, quick testing, but it should be fine. Um, then I'll get it back onto the baseboard because then we've got to wire up the mains that goes to this on the funny little socket thing we've got, which is this. So I've got to fit that back to that. And then we can get it back in the gram and actually sort of test the motor part. Um, also, while I'm here, this is the, the, uh, the pickup. 
it's a type 15 i think is it number 15 yeah um at the minute i think it's reading open circuit but that doesn't necessarily mean the core's gone open circuit it could be because these these top spin rounds are sometimes the wires break off so i'm not going to condemn it just yet um but anyway let's get the motor tested uh, and then we can crack on with the uh, pickup later well the motor's all rewired um and we're ready to get the actual motor back i've screwed the motor back on the baseboard uh you've given the first sort of look at the uh the, the, the new top this is the one that's just come back it's been free french polish it looks beautiful i'm trying not to get too many fingerprints over it um and also i've got to be very careful and i need to refit this is the actual sort of switch mechanism um for the deck so that's going to go in there um obviously I, I don't want this to scratch all this beautiful um french polish so what i'm going to do um i can't do it one-handed so i'm going to just screw this back down get all the bits and bobs back on the top of the We'll sort of switched off on top of the, the, the motor board, uh, spin it over and then we'll wire this switch up and get everything back together. The motor's back on the baseboard as I said before, uh, the switches around here as you can see um, and now we're all wired up ready to go back um, when we get to that part to connect this back into the actual gram itself. Uh, main lead is here, uh, this is the wire that goes off down to the uh, chassis for the um, motor mains. Um, what else to show you? Obviously, there's this the, the new wiring goes up to this point up here, uh, the little fuse there. Pretty much there's that funny little plug thing that's all fitted back in. This one's permanently fixed. This one, albeit with a clip here, this can be taken off should you want to take the motor board out of the receiver, uh, actually out of the gram. Um, so it's on a couple of thick towels purely because obviously we've now got that lovely finish on the other side so now i need to be really careful with tools um we don't want to leave a screwdriver on there and then gouge that beautiful french polished finish i'm going to turn it up the other way this is done i need to concentrate on that pickup here's the type 15 pickup that the gram uses um this little stand that goes on the baseboard the motorboard as I mentioned before, it's reading open circuit, but it, it doesn't necessarily mean that the coil's gone open circuit. We'll have to have a look at that when we get further into it. Uh, this design of head to relay you, because it takes steel needles, it's going to be very tricky to do it one handed. Um, if I put some weight on there, as I twist, you can twist this round to put the needles in, uh, in, in, the, in the little holes at the front there. The little hole here. The problem with that is 90 years of being twisted back and forward, uh, chances are it's broken a wire off. So I'm going to keep my fingers crossed that it's not the coil that's gone open circuit. If it is, we'll have to come up with another plan for that. Um, but I'm going to assume this is full of the same crispy, crunchy wire as the actual gram itself was. So let's get it undone and uh, we'll come back in a second and see whether we can save this pickup. So that's the pickup undone, a couple of screws, and this just slides out, and like a little, almost like a bayonet fitting. Um, lids off. You can see here the great big horseshoe magnet. Here's the tiny little coil. Um, so the needle goes up inside that coil and, and induces a current uh, when it wiggles back and forward. Um, the wire, and you can see here, we've got that crispy wire. I don't, I'm, I was more likely it's going to go on short circuit. It hasn't come off here. Um, so. Let's just get a meter on it and keep our fingers crossed that the little tine, you can see that if I zoom right in on this, you can see in there there's very, very fine wires right inside there. Um, and they do suffer from sort of corrosion and you get sort of third degree on them and then it, it ends up eating through itself. Um, so I'm going to get a meter on and we'll uh, see what it says. Well, sadly, worst fears have come true. <laughs> the actual coil would appear to be open circuit. So what I've got to do now is just completely disassemble this um, pickup. We would have had to do it anyway because this is a little rubber. I see in here you've got a tiny little rubber support here. Uh, and that was rubbery and it's now gone as hard as all that crispy wiring in the actual radio itself. Um, so we need to put some new rubber in there anyway. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take this all apart. Um, and we'll come back once I've got the coil out and we can have a look. So now I've got the old coil out of the uh, pickup. You can see these are the side poles as the actual main magnet. Um, such a f tiny little coil. I mean, it's, it's really hard. There's like an end of a Sharpie pen here. I mean, you can see that it's, it's tiny. Um, so these tiny little wires on here. As you can see, they go quite sort of greeny color. Um, it's possibly, and it will be enamel bar inside, but this is normally um, sort of silk covered and it just uh, corrodes away. So I'm gonna have a look. You never know, might be lucky. The wire might have broken off somewhere in here in one of the actual lead-in wires, but I doubt it. I think we're gonna have an open circuit coil. So I've got some pickups at the back, um, similar vintage. 
So I'm hoping that we'll be able to, if needs be, rob a coil from one of those if we can't get this one to go. While I was just having a quick investigation, you can see, uh, I'm going to check because I'm really zoomed up, um, the wire has snapped there. This should be connected to this one. Um, so it's either broken while I've just been looking at it or it's been, it snapped. So I'm going to do is just very carefully, you can see that tiny, tiny piece of thread that's holding those outside windings down of that coil. Uh, I'm just going to peel one of those back uh, and to see if we can get continuity. Uh, fingers crossed it might have just broken there. Well, I've popped out the back and I've grabbed uh, the box of old pickups and things that I've got kicking about. Uh, that's a VTH one, but I know there's a couple of, maybe there's a Marconi one. There's two or three Marconi ones in here, HMV, same difference. Um, now, it's a very, it's a, it's a later pickup, but I'm pretty, sh I'm pretty sure that the, uh, the, the coils are identical in here. So we'll get it on the bench and we'll just have a quick measure with the, try and do it one handed, which is never easy. You know what? No, I can't. I've got to pause it and come back. So right, it's got the meter on there, and that's reading about 4K. So that's pretty much where I'd expect it to be. Um, so fingers crossed, I'm going to open this one up, and, and we'll be able to rob the coil from this one. Marvellous. The coil in here is identical to the coil in here. So um, what I'll do is I will, because this one tests good, um, get very carefully unsolder it because they say the wires are like human hair thickness if not thinner um, and then we'll get it back in the number 15 pickup um, it's a really intricate thing uh, but it'll but the next time you see it will be rebuilt and all back in the pickup's all been uh, re-put back together I just got to put the lid lid on you can see the replacement coil here uh, the rubber in here has been replaced the rubber's around the front of the a needle carrier that's been replaced as well. You don't want them hard, otherwise you'll it'll end up being really tinny uh, with very little base. So you need those to be as flexible as possible. Uh, the wire's been replaced. It's reused the Sister Flex, this sort of insulation here, to take it through. I uh, pinned at the top, and we've just got this nice soft um, silicon covered wire ready to connect back onto uh, this board here, and then we'll make some new audio leads up that shoot up the the turn up itself. But that's, yeah, good job, job. So this lid can go back on here now. Uh, we'll screw that all down, get it wired up, and then we can just do a final test before we put it back on the motorboard. All back together. Um, coil, we'll just give, I've just temporarily hooked up with a couple of crock leads, and we should get... Perfect. So we're good to go. So we know we can now just rebuild that arm um, and get it back on the baseboard. So finally, we've got the motorboard and deck all reinstated the tone arms back on uh, we've automatic switching system here uh, the little window that looks down to the tuning dial uh, with a new piece of uh, acrylic in there so that sort of stops the dust and muck getting down there so you'll see the the tuning dial behind there uh, there's a little hole here um, that was this would have been for storing used needles because um, obviously these only play one song per needle so you have to sort of chuck it away and put a new one in um, uh, there's a hole here, but luckily I found uh, I've got a spare little cup for those. I've got a couple of these little little brass pots that we use for storing dead needles in. Um, something else I just wanted to point out: the there was a, a, a volume control fitted here for the tone arm. Um, I don't quite know why it was fitted. I can only assume that at some point in its history, something's packed up. Um, they've just fitted that. You've got to think in the you know 50s and 60s, these these would have been two a penny old hat, crappy radiograms from the 30s that you could have got for a jumble sale for you know two bob, if that. So someone's fitted a uh, volume control here, which we're not going to be fitting anymore. So these are the actual controls that the the machine uses. So what I'm going to do here, this is going to look horrible, um, but I think I've got a little. Um, pot that you would use to keep good needles in. So what I'm going to do, I think, is just ex make this hole a little bit larger, rather than having this horrible sort of keyway that someone's boshed in the front here. Um, we'll just make that a little bit larger and for a little um, cup that we can keep new needles in. Okay, uh, so you'll see that done when we come back. Wiring's all done. Uh, let's need to concentrate on now just getting the speaker cloth uh, reattached to the fret, and then we're sort of on the homeward straight. We can start getting everything back in the box and giving it a first fire up. So we've got the uh, the speaker cloth and fret all back in. Uh, we've just got the, the chassis now loaded back inside the, the cabinet itself. Um, so 
you see there's there's also speaker fret on the side as well um or speaker cloth on the side this is it doesn't really show on the camera but it's quite a nice sort of uh, goldy bronzy color so it really matches fairly well from what was there originally uh, it's quite hard to get and it looks nice behind these and that seems to look the part so um it's got a little bit of wiring to do to get the actual chassis wired down and then what we're going to do after that is pop the top motorboard on um, and we're sort of there and halfway back again we're almost ready to give it a fire up well after several weeks uh waiting for bits to arrive and there's a big cabinet being sent off to the to the restorers uh, she's now all back in her box and ready to go back to the customer. I'll bring her back in nice and close in a minute so you can have a little look at uh, the, the finished article on here. Uh, we had to um, sort of redo these knobs because these are wooden knobs on here. Um, so these have been done. But I'll bring you nice and close and then just to finish off, we'll finish off with the record uh, playing on the machine. But for now, I'm just going to pause and bring you straight in here. I can take you straight in here with this lovely celluloid dial, um, which is part of the tuner. Um, you can see the tuner mech dial sort of whizzing around under there. If you turn this off so the phone makes the thing make funny noises. Um, as you bring the power on you start to see that dial light up. So let me just see I'm gonna need more than obviously this is a TRF set so it's the, you're gonna need more than one hand to tune this. Um, I think that's medium way there. Let's have a little fun uh, twiddle. Yes. Um, but trying to get business done early in and out is good for us and I like the fact that Euro has chose to come to United, he's obviously seen we're building, um, uh, he had options to go elsewhere. That is double the annual police budget for the whole day to let this chaos continue. Just about get Caroline. I've only got a short aerial. I've been a TRF. It, it does need a fair aerial. Bring up the reaction. It can be carried out. Yes. The crowdfunder draw and prize do supplement our charity fundraising appeal and it helps us achieve our goal in securing the future of our historic radio ship, the Roster of End. Anyway, just turn it down just for now. Um, as I mentioned before, there was that horrible hole in the front, that keyway where someone had put that. I don't know why they'd fit another volume control on it because the one in here now we've restored it works fine. Um, but this looks much better. It's one of these little. Um, Cups you can load up with new needles because obviously you need to replace. Unless you've got, I've, I have just popped a pack in there just to sort of make it look quite pretty. Um, a pack of the original HMV long play needles, but I mean uh, they're going to be quite hard to come by now. Um, so what you need to do is just fill this little cup up here with uh, with new needles, and then turn the head over, and then replace a the needle in there. But I'll spin it back for now because I've got a long play one in there. And these are good for about. I think it's sort of 50, 60 plays, those ones. Um, there's a little receptacle I said for dead needles. Once you've finished with them, you can chuck them in there, hide them out of the way. Um, and then you can just dump those in the bin or, 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 or sharpen them up and use them again. Uh, and they say, here's the, these are the wooden controls. You've got wooden knobs on the top here. Um, and that's quite sweet. And they've all cleaned up really nicely as well. So I'm going to go bore you anymore. <laughs> it's been a long, oh, I just dropped something. It's been a long video. Uh, it's been going on for quite some time. This poor old test record is very dusty. But I'm going to finish off. I'm going to click it around to Graham, uh, bring the motor on, and then I'm going to finish off with a little bit of uh, one of the Brunswick Orchestra's dancing notes. <laughs>
hope you enjoyed this little uh, look at this 1932 radiogram, uh, the HMV 501. So it's been a labour of love. <laughs> it's been quite a long going one, um, but it's a real sweet little thing. And to think this is what 92 years old, uh, eight years away from being 100. So it's it's crazy really that uh, it's, it's even restorable at that age. But it was a, it was say it was quite a challenge. Uh, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, I don't like saying it, but if you do, give us a thumbs up and subscribe because it really helps uh, the algorithm do its stuff. Um, so the more people who watch this, obviously the more content we can we can put out. Um, but anyway, thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next one. Fix up the screens, they're statically beamed. Granny's records keep us spinning when the sun goes down. I tune the static sound old shows on the tube we know takes me back years ago with each crackle and pop Memories never stop Vinyl's magic in the air We sway static dreams in black and white Guiding me through the night Back to the golden days Oh, so bright Twist the dials, find that glow Pictures framed in a retro show Granny's vinyl plays so sweet The kind of rhythm that makes time fleet With each echo and hiss We find a timeless